Hey, Mr. Corner, the world's greatest Canadian wizard. And today I want to talk about Ozerak because everybody had a big reaction. To, uh, <laughs> this is the A material. No, it's not Ozerak I want to talk about, which is a location in Iraq where the, um, the government under Saddam Hussein, or as we say in the West, uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, uh, created a nuclear program in his uh, land of oil. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was trying to get independent independent development of nuclear devices, maybe. I don't know, that's what Israel said. So they went and bombed a, a reactor. I, you can't tell who the good guys are in that, right? What if they had sprayed nuclear material all over the desert? What if the wind from it had spread over Israel? Yeah, so anyway, this is why I don't believe in world governments. I don't believe in national governments. I believe in one world government that leaves people in the frig alone and just manages the utilities that try to screw us like they're doing in Texas. Yeah. So, not that I live in Texas, I live in Canada. It's a different kind of world out there. We got Indians too. We got illegal immigrants. We call them Americans. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this is the A material, people. So today I want to complete uh, something begun by Wild Bull, you know, the guy with the bald head and the moon ox cap. Well, he talked about something he calls mything persons. And it's about great figures in various ancient mythologies. Yeah, I think he's talked about Oth, who is, uh, uh, we call him Odin. But the ancient Vikings called him Othin. Yeah, there's a difference. And, uh, and Thor, of course, uh, because, you know, no matter what movie we see, we're always Thor afterwards. <laughs> you, oh, this is the A material. So anyway, today I'm going to talk about the difficult one because Wild Bull, whatever his name is, the drink, uh, is not up to it. He's a long, tall drink of <laughs> Red Bull. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, doesn't give him wings. He, uh, if you read Patchroad, you realize that he hates wings. <laughs> he doesn't even like buffalo wings. He is the most boring. Icons of law are the most boring creatures imaginable. And of course, even imagination is antithetical to law. Uh, you are so boring. So anyway, I want to talk about this wonderful guy from Egyptian mythology. And his name was, he was one of a triumvirate of three, right? His name was Osiris. Oh, oh, no, wait, wait. You would call him Osiris, Lord of Life and Regeneration. And the underworld and death and mummification and putrefaction. Oh, we, we cherry pick, don't we? <laughs> we sure do. That's what humans are. Yeah, cherry pickers. There's got to be a joke there, but, you know, the Internet is for porn. Go find it yourself. Anyway... Osiris, as I'm going to call him, had a brother and a sister. They were part of a triumvirate. And the brother was Set, ooh, the Seth beast. And the sister was Isis. And she was like sexy with a cat head or whatever, I forget. Or an ibex head, I forget. In those days, man, <laughs> them kids was born ugly, I tell you what. But still, the point being, Seth was not very fond of Osiris, who had all like all the benefits, right? He was the handsome kid. He was the, he was the buff kid. You know, he was the kid with the great tan. He could, he could bounce a baseball on his bicep doing just doing this, or maybe even like that. I don't know. If you're really good at it, you could probably do it. Dun, dun, like Popeye eats some spinach. And, well, anyway, I don't eat spinach. That that would make me healthy, and then I would have responsibilities in the world, and then I would be lawful. Yeah, uh, so you gotta understand how that works. That antithetical antipode, yeah, law versus chaos. Yeah, you need law so chaos can have fun. But chaos without law is just as boring as law is, really. Like, Escobar, look, look at my new trick. Yeah, like the one yesterday. Yeah, but this one's new. Yeah, like the one the day before. Yeah, but this one. You see what I mean? You gotta have them both. You gotta have law as your straight man. And then you, as the Archon of Chaos, as the Icon of Chaos, Archons are from law, you as the Icon of Chaos get to have fun with the straight man and leave one his pants down around his ankles every time and people will still laugh in 40 years. It isn't that. 
the mark of a great entertainer. Huh? Yeah, I think so. So, Set did not like Osiris, who was the good-looking one. And he also had a, I think in the, in the lingo they call it a big schlong. And uh, Seth was not fond of any of these things, you know. In those days, it was a big deal. The girls all liked Osiris. He didn't like Seth. Now, Seth was cool. He had all the stuff he could do. Look, I can kill. I can, I can maim. I can murder. I mean, what the, what's not to like? And Osiris is like, oh, yes, give you flowers and happiness. And how about you? I'll make your puppy love you forever. Uh, you know, wow. <laughs> Two kids could not be more different. I wonder which one was the young child. So anyway, Seth was getting more and more pissed off daily, you know, because uh, mother lo always loved him best. And uh, so finally one day he was down at the swamp and he says, hey, uh, uh, Osiris, and Osiris says, yes, what is it my beloved brother said? I am so happy to see you today. Your every blemish and every pimple is such an addiction. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I just want to show you something. Come here. So Osiris come over and Seth goes, look, look at that particular crocodile over there in the water. And, you know, it's the biggest crocodile they had ever seen. Big crocodile. Right? And uh, Seth was like, take a look at that. And Osiris was like, that is the most beautiful work of the gods. And as he was talking, of course, Seth picked up a couple of boom and smacked him on the back of the head, which kind of changed his state. I think Vegeta in Dragon Ball said it best. He said, I'm going to send you to another dimension. Because <laughs> you're not allowed to say kill you in Japanese anime back then. Uh, those mores change. You know, one, one year it's like all full boys sticking their nose up skirt into a teenage girl's panties and and in the next one, it's every boy that says anything that has any kind of sexual reference gets beaten up by the tundere. So, and Japanese anime is uneven, but some of it's very good. I really recommend you go look for certain series. They're so worth a watch. They're better than anything, dramatically and writer speaking, that comes out of Hollywood in any way, shape, or form. I'm not kidding. Some of these animated adventures and the romances and the comedies are just first rate, and Hollywood no longer produces first rate anything. That's true. I'm not making this up, people. So, so now Osiris is dead. Laying there on the ground, right? Dead, dead, dead. Uh, scarabs are already coming out to roll some dung his way, right? So, what happens? Well, he's thinking now. Set is thinking. He's going, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap. Now what do I do? What do I do? What do, what, what, what do I have when Isis finds out? Oh, 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 she, she will ream me a new one, even though she was a girl. But still the point being, she was probably more powerful than one of the other guys. So you piss off your sister, you're in trouble, especially in the Egyptian afterlife. What if, what if, what if your sister is the one that's a lioness and she gets mad? Chomp, chomp. Yeah, how about that? We're having you for dinner today, I bet. It's a cookbook. So, this is the A material, people. I'm so sorry for you. Wow. So anyway, so Seth figures, well, I gotta get rid of the evidence, right? Right, so he cuts Osiris into many parts and throws them in boxes and hides them to the four corners, eight, eight-fold corners of the universe. Thanks there, Shoah. Eight-fold corners of the universe. Let's bring you all under there and take all your stuff and kill you. <laughs> That's capitalism at its finest. So I look at them just like Cecil Rhodes. So anyway, this is DA material, people. Those who do not study history are doomed to repeat it in summer school. Not really. So anyway. So Seth got it almost right. He got all the boxes and all the pieces in the boxes. And he threw them all, like, you know, one to Timbuktu and one to, you know, wherever uh, the Cthulian gods had that place in the Antarctic ice, you know, that place. And, uh, one in, uh, in Idaho where the nuclear silos are. You know, all these places where you can't, Greenland, you know, hid these pieces all over the place. So that ISIS would never find the evidence of his terrible crime. And when she came and said to him, said, I haven't seen Osiris around in 
You know, I was going to paint pictures of him all day because he's so pretty. I guess I'll have to use you now. Have you seen him? And Seth was like, well, no, no, I, no, I haven't seen him today. And you know, he was all happy. And so, and so Seth became a lot more popular for a little while. And then one day, somebody caught a fish. Yeah. And he pulled up and he opened it up. And doggone if there wasn't a big schlong in there. Yeah, and it had that distinctive tattoo of the green dragon. And that meant it was Osiris' schlong. Wait, how could... Where, and, well... So, it went right to, right to Isis. I, I don't want to imagine the process of, of discovery, transportation, explanation, and the reaction on the part of the sister. I mean, there's Japanese anime that covers that stuff, but I don't watch it. <laughs> so anyway, she got really mad because her brother, her darling, wonderful brother with whom she had a perhaps slightly unhealthy connection, uh, was now dead. And this was the important, I mean, this was the evidence, and that means there must be other parts elsewhere had his parts been scattered to the winds and fed to the fishes, as tonight he is sleeping with said fishes, except for a schlong. Don't take that to the chef. So, she went looking, and she asked the animals to go look for her, and she asked the creatures of the field and fen to dig up any kind of box that might have a piece of her brother in it. Doggone if they didn't find all the pieces except Mr. Happy. And by then, Mr. Happy wasn't looking too good. Sorry, it's Egypt. It's hot, you know. And so he was kind of unuseful. But the other pieces, oh, there it goes. Start to look like Popeye because I got those three hairs on top and I don't want to show them. So anyway, Isis says, well, you know, death is such a little thing to we gods. I think I'm going to bring him back. It won't be easy because I can't fix him, but I can sew him back together. Yeah, I can. So she put the body all together again, except for the missing part. And, and she says, you know what? We have the technology. We can do it. We can make him bigger, stronger than ever before. And she did. A big piece of wood. And this is where the saying, I got me some bad wood, comes from. People, this is the A material. Read history for the big laughs. Or filter it through Eshkelar's wonderful mind. Subscribe to this channel. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Now, Osiris is back. Sort of. He's got stitches all over. It looks like Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, it isn't Frankenstein. Frankenstein was the doctor. The monster was made out of parts, pieces, parts. You know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. A little bit of Julia to make it right. A little bit. You know, all that stuff I'll put together. Well, that doesn't matter. Frankenstein was the doctor. So it's not a Frankenstein. It's a Frankenstein's monster. Ah, and that's what Osiris now was, an Isis sign monster. Yeah, because he was all stitched together, which makes you a little uneven. I mean, really. So now, this most perfect and beautiful of all the gods was walking with a limp. Yeah. And some parts of him were starting to smell. And, you know, he wasn't quite the, the, the golden boy he was before. And he turned and says... It is my brother Seth that has caused this horror. He must die. So, therein lies a tale. But what happened was, now this is hard to tell, even for Eshkelar. Isis was like looking at this sewn together guy with the big wooden schlong. It's like, it's like a, you know, fire you know, to the people. And she was like, You know, he might be a fixer-upper, but, uh, you know, I could probably deal with this. And so she had babies to him. And then he became God of the Underworld. Bailed on his kids. Understand, Egyptian mythology is full of the craziest stuff, I'll tell you what. So then he became God of the Underworld. There's a story there, too. But 
I wanted to get through the story of the triplets, well, the, the three, right? The set, who's now a bad guy, and everybody hates him, except everybody's afraid of him, because he does stuff like <laughs> clubs his brother, you know, it's dangerous. You don't want to mess with him, you know, he's immortal too, so, and you're not. Oops, I'm going to stay out of this. But anyway, right, and Isis, who was the sister who could do all kinds of stuff, obviously, and uh, wasn't afraid to call a spade a spade, so to speak. Ha <laughs> ha, you bet. Power to her. And uh, I, uh, Osiris, who was like, who like had all the gifts, and they were all taken away. And then he was like stitched back together again, kind of, right? And uh, made into somebody's ideal. And then he realized he really couldn't exist in the world anymore, so he became God of the Underworld. And he is depicted with, in Egyptian hieroglyphics with green skin and half are all wrapped in mummy wrappings, even though he's kind of alive and dead. Yeah, well, it's difficult to understand what happens <laughs> on those other planes with the, with the various mythological deities. But I would say, overall, that Osiris has the most interesting story, outside of Squick, of all these guys. What do you think, huh? Thor's nothing compared to that. Hey, what do you think, right? So this is your old pal Eshkelar, talking about how I'd rather be immortal and uh, look at some pretty mortal girls walking by than I would be born with all the great gifts that can be granted to a god and then have me cut into pieces by my, by my jealous brother and the, and the good bit lost forever. And then somebody says, oh no, it's better than before. And you're like, wow, what does that mean? <laughs> so ah, if you can think of a better story, I'd like to hear it. Maybe I'll do this story again and have pictures. What do you think? Think this would be a good one for illustrating? I don't know.